Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts. This was never a game that I intended on doing, but I was at home over the weekend looking through my stack of games, and this game really popped out at me, and one reason it did was because Squaresoft, before they became Square Enix by the way, teamed up with Disney. Just let that sink in for a second. I'm sure everybody knows about this game by now, but back in 2002, when I saw this game, I could not believe it. But let's go ahead and start a new game. The first thing, like, right off the bat that I want to tell you guys is the difference between normal and expert. As far as I know, there is a secret ending at the end of the game. And if you do expert, as long as you beat the game, I'm pretty sure you get the secret ending. But if you do normal, you actually have to get, like, 100% or whatever. So I'm gonna go with normal, because I'm gonna go ahead and get everything in the game anyway. So might as well not make it, you know, harder on ourselves while we do that. But, I, who cares about vibration? But this opening cutscene is one of the best ones that I can think of in any game. The song is catchy, and it's just, you know, visually amazing. So I want you guys to watch this, and we're gonna pick it right back up after the cutscene. I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Like, is any of this for real? Or not? Alright guys, I cannot think of another game that got me as excited to play as this game. That opening cutscene was just amazing. And by the way, that said so much to do, so little time, and then it's like, take your time. I don't get, you know, that was always confusing to me as well. But already you can see, like, Disney princesses, or one Disney princess on the floor or whatever. And I'm pretty sure, now I'm gonna be honest here, I'm not a huge Disney princess fan, and I'm not sure that you can blame me for that, honestly. But I'm pretty sure this is Snow White. If I'm wrong, I guess I'm just gonna have to be wrong. But what is cool about this game 
is obviously you can tell from obviously you don't have the the cover art's not on the screen right now or anything but it is a mix of square soft characters final fantasy characters and disney characters i mean i'm sure there's some other Squaresoft series in here somewhere, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. And not in this game anyway. Later Kingdom Hearts games have stuff from other games as well, but the first thing that we have to do here is we have to make a pretty difficult choice. And okay, I'm jumping, you don't have to leave the dialogue box up there, but we get to choose what we want to be our strength. So either we can be, you know, have higher defense, higher attack power if we choose a sword, or higher magic if we choose a staff. The difference between it doesn't make that much of a difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the shield as my, you know, my strength, I guess. Only because every single other time that I've played this game, I've chosen the sword, which is what I think most people do, honestly, just because magic isn't that important in this game, but, I mean, it is kind of important, but I don't know if it's worth it to give up, you know, extra attack and defense when you're gonna be doing that most of the time. Now, what I'm also gonna do is give up the sword. Now, that might sound kind of weird, like, not normal, I guess, but the reason I'm doing that is I'm pretty sure if you use this setup, your base attack power will only, one, only be one-third lower. If that makes sense, I'm not sure if that makes sense. It'll be one-third lower than if you chose the sword as your main thing, so it's not that big of a deal. Also, by the way, it gives you an option to change it, you know, at this point if you want to. But also, I'm pretty sure that if you choose the shield first as, like, your strength or whatever, you get two extra item slots for, like, you know, quick using items or whatever, which can be pretty useful because in this game, you are not allowed to go into the menus during fighting. So pretty much, if you forgot to equip your potions or whatever before you go into a fight, you might be screwed. So that is why I kind of like having the shield because you actually get more, you know, items that you can use during battle or whatever. Okay, now who is this? I'm gonna have to say Cinderella, but I'm not sure. So, let's go ahead and land here. Alright, so here we get to finally attack. And we can actually use our shield as a, a weapon, which... In the game, I'm pretty sure there's no way to get Sora to use a shield like that, which... It's kind of unfortunate because it is kind of cool that you can attack with a shield, but one of our party members that we get later in the game actually will use a shield as an, you know, an attack, an offensive weapon or whatever. So we'll be getting him, I'm not even sure how late into the game we get our party members or whatever. Unfortunately, and this isn't really a spoiler or anything, there are only two party members in the game, but that's not really that big of a deal. And by the way, the dialogue boxes popping up right now are very obvious things. That's why I'm kind of skipping through them. They're like, different items can do different things, like restore HP or MP. Now, another thing that I liked about this game is that it was the first game that I can think of that I ever played, any RPG, that is, that was not a turn-based RPG. Obviously, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 all came out before this, and those were the ones I really played. And a little bit of 6, maybe, every once in a while when my cousins came over. But... I never played any action RPGs before this, so this was kind of my introduction. And I'm not sure that if I like turn-based or action RPGs better, but it really didn't matter for this game. I just thought this was one of the coolest games that I had ever played. And what I like about this right here is obviously you can see the darkness is engulfing the platform that we're on. And I think it's cool how Disney characters, the contrast between the bright Disney princesses or whatever, and the darkness that's like engulfing us, I thought that was always pretty cool. I mean, how often do you see dark, you know, devil monsters on a Disney princess platform or whatever. I'm not sure. Now, another thing that I want to point out is I'm actually, and I don't usually talk about this when I do it, but I'm actually playing this game on an emulator. And I, by the way, I don't mean to like promote things, but I have a video where I talk about how to dump a PlayStation 2 BIOS. So I actually am using my own, you know, stuff. Like I dump my own BIOS. I dump my own copy of Kingdom Hearts. And the reason I did all this, normally I do like to play on a console better, but I had no good way of recording my PlayStation 2. For whatever reason, the HD PVR was not playing nice with it, so I just went ahead and did this. Now here we have a treasure chest with nothing in it. I guess it was only there to serve as a an introduction on how to open treasure chests or something like that. But what it did kind of do is give us a box. Now either you can move it like they wanted you to, I'm not sure if you have to do this or not, but if you break open the box, you get a potion, which we'll be getting a lot of those, we will be getting a lot of those pretty soon. Now that fills in the top part of the door here, and I forgot to mention while I was over there, let's go look at this door again, it's kind of see-through. That's kind of funny, because it, the first time I saw that, it reminded me of the, 
in Back to the Future, you know how Marty, when he disappears in that picture or whatever, for whatever reason, that is what it reminded me of. Now that the door is completely open, or not open, but tangible, I guess, we can examine it and we should be able to go through. Now that right there, it might not seem important, and it's not, you know, overly important or anything, but if you've played the game before, you will know the importance of light and dark in this game. So that is one thing that is a really big theme in this game that we'll obviously be discuss discussing as the game goes on. Here we are on Destiny Island, sort of, but we can't go anywhere because we have to talk to these people. And who are these people, by the way? If you've played any Final Fantasy game, you'll probably know. Here we have Titus, or as the game pronounces him, Titus, but I will not be calling him Titus. Over here we have Selfie from Final Fantasy VIII, almost a nine. And over here we have Waka from Final Fantasy X. And the funny thing is they're all young, like they are all younger than their counterparts in their games or whatever. So I'm not sure, this obviously isn't canon to the Final Fantasy series, but obviously that means that they, I guess this game takes place before those games. Now here we get another couple of options. The importance of these options, whatever you answer to these questions, is how fast you level up at different parts of the game. So the easy way to remember this is if you answer the first option that each of these characters gives you, I'm not sure if that was grammatically correct or not, but what it does is let you level up quickly at the beginning of the game, but I think once you hit level 50, you stop slowing, or you slow down in leveling, so that's not really good, in my opinion, because it's obviously harder to level up, you have to get more XP, so I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it just makes it easier to level up if you choose one of these two right here. I'm going to go ahead and make it just a consistent leveling up rate, because I think that's probably best. And by the way, Titus asks, or not Titus, Waka is going to ask me, what do I want out of life? I don't know if I want anything, any of these things, but I guess I'm going to go ahead and broaden my horizons. And none of them really appreciate what you tell them. Watch, I forgot to mention what Selfie says here. Is friendship such a big deal? No matter what option you, you know, say to her, she will always say, is whatever you said a big deal? I kind of think friendship is a big deal, but let's move on here. Titus, what am I so afraid of? I guess being different, but only because I want to, you know, level up consistently. Now, I want friendship, I want to broaden my horizons, and I'm afraid of being different. What it's going to tell us, whatever time it tells us, either midday, dawn, or like at night or whatever, is the it corresponds to how fast you level up so whatever you pick whatever time it tells you your adventure begins is how fast you level up so midday that means it's going to be consistent throughout the game but if it was either morning or night it would be you know shifted towards the beginning of the game or the later in the game now the day i will open the door is both very this far off and very near we've already opened the door but there is a huge door at the end of the game we will definitely be opening so they are right there now i am not gonna lie don't know who this disney princess is right here and i know i'm probably gonna get like comments like oh that's x princess but i'm not sure and they are actually kind of important in this game and it's kind of sad that i don't remember who they are and another thing that i just remembered and they're telling us we can't open the item screen in fights which i think i mentioned already one thing that i forgot to mention is that they remind me of the sages from ocarina of time and i know i just like finished let's let's play so that's probably why it's on my mind or whatever but the disney princesses in this game kind of act like kind of act like the sages from Ocarina of Time. Now the combat in this game is not overly difficult. It's nothing like, or it's not too easy. It's not, what I mean, what I mean to say is it is not too hard. It's not too easy. Kingdom Hearts 2, on the other hand, I like that game a lot, but Kingdom Hearts 2, literally all you have to do is spam the X button and you'll, you can beat anybody pretty much. But what I like about this game is it takes a little bit more strategy I guess would be a good word it's still not like I said it's not too hard because I don't think it was meant to be hard it has Disney characters in it but it's still not as easy as Kingdom Hearts 2 but it does provide a little bit of challenge now here we have the light what's it gonna be illuminating a save point I like the save points in this game I don't know they're pretty obvious that they're save points but if we go if we stand on it I think it's gonna make a like a bridge appear or something like that
And I don't know why I thought that in particular was cool when I was a kid, but I did for some reason. Now let me go ahead and save. Now, I don't know how many of you would have ever seen this. Memory card PS2 is unformatted. That is because, like I said, this is an emulator. So I guess, you know, whatever the memory card, however the memory card thing is set up on the emulator, that's what happens if you try and save, if you've never saved before, I guess, with the emulator. But the emulator, by the way, like I said, I don't like to talk about it too much just because I like to be immersed in the game or whatever. But it does, like, the graphics are way, way better than even I would have gotten if I could have recorded the PlayStation 2 with the HD PPR, in my opinion. And there's only, like, one little minor detail that I can think of that is a big deal when you're using an emulator instead of just recording from the thing. And I'll point that out when we get to it. Now, I think we're going to be getting our first big fight here. And this is a- I like everything that is related to darkness and shadows in this game is pretty cool. As we get closer to the light, our shadow becomes bigger. Everything- the thing was, when I played this game, I was about 8 years old. That was about 10 years ago. The message this game gives you, I think, and even back then, I think is pretty inspiring, I guess? And it might not look like it right now, I guess, because we're fighting a huge demon. But it's really about, I guess, kind of, as, over the course of the game, we'll see that Sora can deal with more things, and we'll get to that later. It's just, I guess what's important to know right now is that the game does have a very cool message that I don't think a lot of people appreciate. But, here is our first boss fight, I guess. Now, I'm not sure, I forgot the name of this thing, but it's not really all that important. But, what I like to do, and what I think maybe everybody does, once he does that attack, you can actually jump up and hit his head or whatever. And if you get the three, the combos or whatever, going, you can get tech points. Which are, like, specific things you can do to get extra XP. It doesn't really, it adds up, I guess, over the long run. And once we get to the next area, we can actually get some more tech XP. It's no different than regular XP, it's just kind of bonuses, I guess, on top of beating the enemy or whatever. Now, this boss is not hard, I don't think. But, if you lose, it's not, you don't, nothing happens. I think if you lose to this boss, the game continues as if nothing happens. So it doesn't matter if you win or lose this fight. And another thing, if you somehow, like, deflect those things that he's shooting out of his pelvis area, you actually do get tech points for that as well. So I think if you really wanted to, if you had hours and hours on hand, I think you could actually get to level 100 in this area right here, but like I said, that would take absolutely forever. Now I think- oh man, that was kind of close. Now it's a good thing I got the- wow, that's not good. Keep falling off here, but if I had taken the sword instead of the shield, what that- that hammer- not, what am I talking- that fist attack probably would have almost killed me right there. And we defeated him. Now, one another thing I kind of like about this game is when it when you defeat an enemy or a boss, really, it goes into that slow motion effect. And I never realized, by the way, that you can actually control Sora when you're in that little slow motion thing. So that is actually a pretty cool effect. I, th but the emulator doesn't like it too much because when it gets to the end, it kind of shifts up to the top left, which I'm sure you sure you saw. Now, I'm gonna let you guys watch another cutscene that's coming up because it is actually pretty cool. It will introduce us to some more characters and stuff like that. And obviously the characters in this game is what really drives the game itself. So I want you guys to enjoy the cutscene, and after that I will pick it back up. <laughs> Give me a break, Kyrie. So are you lazy bum. I knew that I'd find you snoozing down here. No, this huge black thing swallowed me up. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't... Ow! Are you still dreaming? It wasn't a dream. Or was it? I don't know. What was that place? So bizarre. Yes, yeah, sure. Say, Kyrie, what was your hometown like? You know, where you grew up? I've told you before, I don't remember. Nothing at all? Nothing. You ever want to go back? Hmm, well, I'm happy here. Really? But you know, I wouldn't mind going to see it. 
I'd like to see it too. Along with any other worlds out there. I want to see them all. So what are we waiting for? Hey! Aren't you guys forgetting about me? So... I guess I'm the only one working on the raft. Ugh. <laughs> and you're just as lazy as he is. <laughs> so you know this. Okay, we'll finish it together. I'll race you. Huh? What? Are you kidding? <laughs> Ready? Go! <laughs> and this, guys, is Kingdom Hearts. Cannot believe that I'm doing this game. I can't believe that I never thought of doing the game, honestly, because it was one of my favorite games growing up. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, as soon as this little thing right here ends, I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode because I pretty much got all the big cutscenes out of the way. And by the way, we're on Destiny Islands. That is kind of important. When I was a kid, I never thought, like, if you look around, it doesn't look like it connects to anything. It looks like it's just this one area right here, and nobody could live here. But it turns out, I, I don't know if we find that out in this game or not, in Final Fantasy, in Kingdom Hearts 2, there are actually some houses here. So anyway, guys, I want to go ahead and end the episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, I really like this game, and I hope to see you guys back for episode 2, where we will do some things with Kyrie.